Most of the stock that we're going to use in Engineering 153 is purchased in long lengths, at least six feet or more. You obviously can't put that into the mill or the lathe, so it has to be cut down to a length that you can use in the machine. And that's where the horizontal bandsaw comes in. It's used to cut stock into sizes that can be used in the machine tools. So in this movie, we're going to look at um, the, the different knobs on the control panel and what they do the various components of the horizontal bandsaw, the three teeth rule, and then look at cutting procedures and finish up with all important cleanup procedures. So here's the control panel. Let's have Don Howard go over how to use the control panel. Hey, welcome. We're back at the uh, Applied Technology Center on a bright and sunny day in July. Don Howard's here. He is our master tool maker. Don, uh, this uh, piece of equipment looks like it's uh, seen a lot of action over here. What is it and what is it used for? This is your horizontal bandsaw and this is used for cutting your raw material. Say we get a big piece of raw stock and you got to get it down closer to a usable size. And we're going to cut it down here. All right, so can you bring us, uh, like, what are the important controls and parts of the machine here? All right, the very first and most important thing is this red button here. We always got to think about that. Here it's not labeled as an e-stop, but you push this button and it will shut off the machine. Don, is that the international, like, symbol for an e-stop? Is it a red button always? Big red button, yep. Okay, Stop. very good. All right, so red button's e-stop. Okay, green button's power, all right. This one with the arrow on it, your coolant on and off. Nine times out of ten, it will be already on. This is this valve is to control how fast the head comes down. It's uh, hydraulic, so this handle here raises. We can raise our head up. Is it hydraulic or is it pneumatic? Uh, it's hydraulic. As you can see, we have a stop on here. I close this down, and the valve shut, so it doesn't allow the oil to pass. All right, so this, you can, you can adjust with that knob, Don, how fast the blade moves through the butter, right? Yes, okay. through the butter. <laughs> Cuts like butter. <laughs> well, we're going to be cutting metal here, but, all right, so we, you would normally use the automatic feed, Don? Yes, always. Okay. Why, why would that be? Because um, you don't want to get over here and start pushing on this and forcing the blade through, because then it will cause binding. So you basically allow the machine to do the cutting, you set up speeds. And as you can see on this machine here, they have a stop set up already. So they don't want you to go over a certain feed rate. Okay. Right. You don't want to force the blade into the part. You want the blade to have enough time to cut smoothly through. All right. So now we see the controls up there. Um, on, e-stop, coolant on, off, and what do you call it? Do you call it a feed rate? Feed rate. Yep. Feed rate. Okay. Let's review the control panel that Don went over. The first button on the left, the, l the uh, green one, is the on button. Obviously, you turn that on, the blade is going to start moving. So you have to be very careful, make sure no, nothing's in the way of like, your hands or anything when uh, the blade comes on. You also want to make sure that the blade is above your part and not resting on the part when you put this on button, because we're going to get into why that is later on. The emergency stop, or in case it's not an emergency, it's just a stop button. That's how you would turn off the machine, so that would immediately stop the blade. The next knob, the black one there with the little arrow on it, is the coolant. So the coolant is always going to be used while, while cutting on the horizontal bandsaw. You, you'll always want to put that to the on or the um, toward the left. The button on the very right is the feed rate. This is a uh, hydraulic machine, so um, this feed rate knob is going to control how fast the blade uh, descends into the part. The big block of aluminum there is a aftermarket feed stop that was ins installed at the Applied Technology Center to ensure that the feed rate never got above uh, a specified value. So this just prevents uh, a, an excessive speed rate or feed rate that would uh, damage the blade. In our next movie segment, Don's going to go over the various components of the machine. All right, now where are we going to go on the machine, Don? Right, out here in the front, we, I already explained, here's a little handle to raise this up. 
Some machines come equipped with this little handle. If you don't have a handle, you just grab the hold of the head and you can raise your head up. And as you can see, the head is staying suspended in air, and that's because I left the valve closed. So that's how you can be able to adjust your work in and out of the vise. This is the open and close your vise right here on the end. So as you crank this handle, the vise jaw loosens the vise jaw, but in order to open that vise jaw up more, you have to actually grab the vise jaw and slide it. Well, Don, it looks like uh, it doesn't slide too easily. Oh, there it goes. You freed it up. It's like a rapid traverse. If you, once you start to open the vice jaw, it releases it, and it allows you to move this thing freely back and forth, all right, to accommodate whatever size material you have. All right, so that knob, this one, doesn't actually move the jaws. It just locks them or unlocks them? Correct. All right, good. Once you start engaging it, though, it will advance that blade, uh, the jaw. Oh, okay. All right, for advancement purposes, it will lock up. Oh, it will. You can advance with it, but for taking it away, it, it won't. Right. All right, very good, Don. Uh, is this knob used for anything? For belt tensioning, all right, uh, which for the most part, students shouldn't get uh, involved with that. Leave that up for an instructor or a tech to take care of. All right. All right, all right don't, don't, don't touch that. These guards should stay closed at all times. They cover up. There's an idle wheel, and then there's a drive wheel here, which drives the band, all right? So it's one continuous band that loops around, and you want to be very careful of that band. So there, there's stickers here, Don, where people should, you know, caution, keep hands out of the machine. I think the, the yellow is indicating that there's something dangerous there. On the other side, it says, power to machine must be turned off when changing blades. I'm sure that's there because someone didn't do that once. I can almost probably guarantee that. Okay. All right. But uh, you are not going to be changing blades entering 153 students, nor are you going to be doing the belt tensioning. If those are problems or you suspect a problem, Don, they should do what? See an instructor. Okay. See an instructor. All right. So that's the left part of the machine. We're coming up here to the, the middle. Yep. In the middle here is where we got our clamping device. All right. Like we've learned before in other uh, machines is we got to have work holding devices. We're just not going to stick and stick our material under here and hope that it stays while we uh, cut it. So we have a solid, solid jaw here that will be in the back. It extends through. If you have long pieces of material, we have, if you can see through there, Jason, can you see that over there to stand? We have a stand on that side that you would move out depending on how long your material is. Um, so that it would help support your work. But your work would set in here on top of the table, slide through, sit on top of that rack, and then you would make uh, the cut you need. Don gave us a lot of information just now, so let me try to digest it a bit and, and review. So starting on the left, there, the, the, the knob there with the wheel, that's the vice jaw handle. Now what we learned in this movie was you can use that handle to tighten up the vice jaw uh, so that you can hold your part. But when you loosen that uh, vice jaw handle, it does not move the, the movable uh, jaw, which I have the cursor on right here in the middle. All right, so that movable jaw, uh, to, to move it away and loosen up your part, you'll have to wiggle that a little bit with your hand uh, to get it going because the vice jaw handle will not move that uh, away. Now keep in mind, anytime you're putting your hands in here, you're never to put it below uh, or underneath this uh, blade. Okay, never put your hand under the blade for two reasons. Number one, your hand moving across this blade could cause a terrible cut, or if somehow something happened to the hydraulics and this blade fell when your hand was in there, uh, also uh, more problems. All right, next is the lift handle. Okay, so the lift handle is something that you can use to lift this arm uh, up. Um, also, we're going to see when we do a cutting operation, it's going to be used to support the arm when we first engage the blade because when we first engage the blade into the, uh, the part, we want to go at a very sl slow uh, speed rate. Then there's the belt tensioning wheel. And Don mentioned that if you suspect there's any problem with the tension in the belt, you are not to touch this wheel, Engineering 153 students. If I find that you've been touching this wheel, I'm going to bring you to my office and hit you with a ruler on the back of your hand. 
All right. Uh, so if there's a problem, you're just going to be uh, asking your instructor, uh, could they look at the tensioning, and you let the instructor deal with that. Uh, next you have in the back, you can't see it too well in this photo, but that's the material stand. Because if this is a six foot long piece of material, you're going to need something to support it in the back. And that's what the material stand is used for. Then we have the vice jaws. Okay, So that's where you're going to put your material and you're going to snug it up. The last component is probably the most important, that being the blade. So uh, that's an extremely sharp blade and you have to show it a lot of respect. Before we get into actually showing a cut, let's talk about something known as the three teeth rule. Now, the rule is a minimum of three teeth should touch the part while cutting. So let's take a look on the left. When you first start a cut and the blade is just beginning to engage the part, you're only going to have one tooth hitting the corner of the part at a time. Now, that's a very, uh, I won't say dangerous, but it's, it's a time when the blade can be damaged um, because when only one tip is, is engaging the part, it's easy for that tip to get broken off. So what it says above here is you st at the start of a cut, you know, with only one tooth engaged, you have to use a very slow feed rate. And what you're going to do with the horizontal bandsaw is you're going to override the automatic feed and use the support handle on the side to, uh, to, to make the, the, the blade uh, progress into the part very, very slowly at the beginning. Now, once the blade is engaged, and you kind of have see-through here, but once you're in the middle cutting and you have three or more teeth engaged, then you can restore and let go of the, uh, the support handle on the side of the arm and let the automatic feed rate uh, do its job and, and move to the full feed rate that is acceptable. In our next movie clip, Don's going to show an actual cut of a piece. So listen up. And then we would clamp it. And I'm going to demonstrate by using this piece of aluminum. Okay, so Don's picking up. What's the approximate dimensions of this aluminum, Don? Uh, one and a half by one and a half, and I'm going to cut it off about a one inch long. Now, what if I don't have my calipers here? Is there any way to easily measure it? Oh, my trusty the, six inch scale. the six inch scale. Okay. All right, so you want to you want to cut this piece of uh, you want to cut one. You we, our finished product is going to be one inch long. Yes. Yeah, so so do we cut it right to one? No, we're going to leave an eighth of an inch, so that way we got sixty thousandths per side to clean up. All right, so folks, you do not in in a precision machining environment, you don't try to cut right to length. You cut it big, and then you'll go over to the mill and uh, and machine it precisely down to the dimension. One other safety feature I want to bring to your attention is, you notice that I raised up the head and I slid this under. Do not put your fingers underneath this blade. Do not load your parts with this blade on. So whenever you're coming up here to put a part in, make sure the power is off. Do not put your hands underneath the blade. You can slide your part in from here. If you need to reach through, reach through to push your part out. Do not reach underneath. If you happen to reach underneath and you pull across, these are very sharp. These are teeth. They will cut, and you drag across here, look like someone had a rake and raked across the top of your hand. That just opens you up to possible infections because there's coolant and there's chips and different things. So you want to be careful. You do not want to put your hand underneath. All right. I want to measure my part. I'm going to close up my vice jaws now. Now, one other thing with putting your hands under there, if for some reason the hydraulic system failed, it'd be like being under your car with just a jack under there. You wouldn't want that. No, you wouldn't want that. So it'll come down and... You do not put your hand under that blade under any circumstance. All right. What I'm doing now is I brought the blade down closer to my workpiece. I'm going to take my, my six inch steel scale that's nicely conveniently located in my pocket. I'm going to rest this up against the vise and I'm going to leave approximately one eighth of an inch. See, I'm going to touch it to the, this is, if you look at the teeth, you got one pointing out. That's called the set. All right. And I'm going to measure off of that set about an inch and an eighth. All right. And I'm going to lock the vise down. All right. One of the things you're going to want to pay attention to is as you fire this up, I can start up this machine. The coolant will start to flow. You can see it. 
If it doesn't flow, you might have to turn one of these valves. They should be already preset and you shouldn't have to worry about it. All right? Now, before I just open up this valve, I'm going to support the machine head with this handle. I don't want just to drop in. Rule of thumb when you're, when you're cutting, you always want at least three teeth engaged in the part at all times. Well, if we look at this, that's not possible when I first start to engage because I'm on a corner. So I'm going to help support this and let it cut in gradually. As it starts to cut in, now I get the support of the three teeth and I'm going to let it cut. You may determine that you may have to slow down the feed rate depending on how the saw is performing. Aluminum, Don, you generally could go almost at the maximum rate as opposed to steel, you might go slower. Uh, b believe it or not, with the steel, you might be able to allow it to have more pressure oh, okay. because the steel won't cut away as fast. All right, so where the aluminum is, is being soft, it can dig in more, so I might want to go slower. slower. Okay. All right, so it is cutting through there. It looks like that's like a, a mocha coffee. Uh, yeah, it's a little dirty. <laughs> All right, so now something fell off. Right. You don't just go reaching in there. Part, the part fell off into the chip bin. We have our other piece still in the vise. Let's review those cutting procedures that Don just went through. So first of all, you're going to install the stock material into the vise, making sure uh, that you don't put your hand under uh, the, the blade. You want to make sure you use the material stand for long stocks. Don just had a short piece, so it didn't need it in this movie. But if something was six foot long or four foot long, you'd have to use the material stand to support it in the back. So in red here, I'm saying again, never put your hand or fingers under the blade. Whether the blade's on or off, never under the blade. Well, so once your part's in there, you just snug the vise a little bit, okay? Don't... Don't make it tight because you still want the part to be able to slide a little bit. You then use your six inch rule and measure uh, at least one eighth inch longer than what you want. So we wanted a one inch uh, piece at the end of our machining process. So we cut it long at one and a one eighth inch. Once you have the position of the material set properly in the vise, you can tighten the vise down. Then turn on the motor and the coolant. Make sure that the blade is above the part. You can turn on the feed. Now you want to make sure that you're holding the support handle when you first turn on the feed because you don't want the blade dropping in too fast when it's just going to hit that corner with one tooth like we talked about before. Continuing on here, uh, once the uh, blade is fully engaged into the part and at least three teeth are cutting and touching the part at any given time, uh, you can resume and let go of the support handle on the left and let the, um, the feed rate go to its uh, full rate. Now once you're done with the cut, the part's going to fall into the chip bin. You should not be putting your hand in there catching the part. Now I know the chip bin is an ugly, dirty, nasty place but let your part fall into that, okay? Not until you turn off the machine, okay, uh, should you go down and pick up your part. Now, once again, I'm saying, so your, your part falls in, you let it fall, then you turn off the machine and turn off the coolant. Once the, the, the uh, motor is off and the blade is no longer moving, you can use... A very, you're going to have to use a lot of care in handling the part because there's going to be sharp edges. So you may want to use a rag or a paper towel to pull your part out. When you get your part, it's a good practice to then immediately get a file and file off the sharp edges that will have been created by the cutting process. Next we're going to look at cleanup procedures because Cutting through with all that coolant and the chips, there's going to be some work to do. So let's watch how Don does it. Now as we're as clean up, leave the saw in a down position. Open up your vice jaw. All right. I can reach in here. I can pull out my part. All right. And again, if you have to open up that vice jaw, you just might have to wiggle the handle a little bit to get the vice to move out. All right. So I can take this part. And I can grab my part out of here. Now, Don, as you grab that, you're an experienced person on how to grab stuff. 
you got potentially some sharp edges there, right? Yes. You want to be careful. Here's an example. Here's the burr from that was just left from the saw blade. All right. And you can see the same thing here. You got burrs all over this part from where the saw had to finish cutting. How do we get rid of those burrs? Should we do it now or just give it to our lab partner? Uh, we're going to show you in the next video uh, how to get rid of the burrs by using a belt sander. Okay. All right. Or we can use a file. A file or a belt sander will get rid of the burrs. Okay. But those are something to, to have a lot of respect for. That is correct. All right. So, Don, where, how do we clean this machine up? Do we leave the blade down? Leave the blade down, and we're going to have to get towels, and we're going to brush the chips. Take and brush your chips off down into the chip bin. You're going to want to, this has a sump in it, so it will, the water will drain off in there. But have the courtesy to at least get the chips down in the chip bin. All right? And then we'll leave the rest of the cleaning up to the uh, tooling and machining guys. You mean the students? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, should we wipe this down at all, Don, or just, uh, just try, to get, try to get most of the chips out? Chips down. Just get the chips out. Be courtesy. Make sure everything's clean for the next operator. All right. Well, very good. So that's a, a, a cut. We cut a little extra off, uh, and we're going to mill it down at a later time, and we're getting the rough chips out. Jason, why don't we just come on over to a machine to just remind the students what a poor practice is. So someone over in the machine shop left this drill press in this situation, okay? So we may ask you uh, or give you a, uh, a picture of something like this, and we're going to ask you, what is wrong? Name everything that's wrong. Well, I'm going to tell you some things that are wrong. Number one, we never leave a tool in the chuck, okay? Two, this area isn't cleaned up at all. It's a pure mess. Number three, look at this. The key just left here, tools. There's tools down into the chip bin. This is, this is uh, utter chaos here. This is uh, unacceptable. Later on, Jason, you can take a still picture of it, and I'll have the students say, you know, name the, the three things that are wrong here. All right, thanks a lot for coming today. Let's look at those cleanup procedures again. First of all, you're not going to do any cleaning until the motor and coolant are both off. You make sure you keep the blade in the down position while you're doing the cleaning operation. You're going to open the vise jaw. You're going to carefully remove the leftover material. Now, don't touch those sharp edges. Just like when you picked up your part out of the chip bin, there are sharp edges from the cutting process. So make sure you don't touch those. You may want to use a rag or paper towel to to pick up the part or to touch the leftover material. Now, just like your part, you should file off the sharp edges on the leftover material. You don't want to put a length of stock back onto the stock rack that has sharp edges that could cut that could cut the next person. So, if you're caught doing that, you're going to have that red-faced instructor coming over and being in your face. So, uh, be courteous and, and always file off sharp edges before you put leftover stock back. Once the stock is out, you want to use the chip brush and make sure you sweep, sweep all the chips back down into the chip bin and all or any coolant that might be there as well. Uh, although Don said wiping things down was not necessary, you should probably ask your uh, Engineering 153 lab instructor whether they would like um, any you know, wiping down with paper towels or whether uh, just using the chip brush is sufficient. So now you're ready to answer the questions and hand the answers in to your lab instructor. All right, the first question is, Draw and label a diagram of the control panel for the horizontal bandsaw, obviously. Number two, explain how the vise must be opened on the horizontal bandsaw. Three says, list the cutting procedures for the horizontal bandsaw. Four, why must care be used when, when handling a cut part? What should be done to a part that has been cut to make it safer to handle? And you remember, you should do the same thing to the leftover material. Number five. This is actually kind of like uh, a daily double question uh, on Jeopardy. 
Okay, this is going to be on the next page. List three cleanup errors shown in the photo on the next page. So once you have your wager in, let's see what the question is. So there it is. There's the photo for question five. Take a look at this. This happens to be a drill press. Name three things that are incorrectly done with the cleanup here. All right, we're going to see you in the next movie. We're going to talk about the vertical bandsaw. Till then, see you later.